Okay, well, good afternoon and thank you for joining us. This is Diana Peralt, Manager of Chapter Development and Fundraising at NHF, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to today to um, this webinar in June for Joint Health in partnership with Santa Fe Genzyme. Um, so just a few things before we jump in this afternoon. Towards the end of the webinar, we will have time for questions, so please feel free to send those in through the Q&A feature in Zoom near the bottom of your screen, or you may also use the chat feature in which you can send a message directly to me or to all attendees. Um, and after today's webinar, I will be sharing the link to the recorded version along with the accompanying PowerPoint so that you may share it with any staff or community members who perhaps weren't able to make it today. If you're on today's webinar, you should already be on that distribution list, but if you aren't sure or if you'd like to add someone to that list, please let me know. Um, you can send me an email to let me know of any of those additions, or you can give me a phone call. And finally, uh, just don't forget about the NHF Chapter Coffee Shop. It's your one-stop shop for all things announcements, questions, FYIs, or even celebrations. Uh, open to only NHF chapter staff, just please let me know if you have yet to join and need a link to that private group, or if you have any changes in staff, uh, please let me know so that I can be aware of it and remove members if necessary. Um, now on to June for Joint Health. So what is June for Joint Health? Um, many of you already know, but this is such an exciting project brought to you by NHF and Santa Fe Genzyme. Um, I wanted to share a little bit about this program with you and why joint health improvement is something we all should strive for. Most of you probably know this, but nearly 80% of bleeds in patients with hemophilia occur in the joints, and clinical studies have shown that commitment to conditioning, stretching, exercising, and the right treatment can really improve joint health, reduce bleeds, and help resolve target joints. So through the collaboration, June for Joint Health really looks to encourage lifelong habits that promote safe, joint-building activities that lead to healthy joints all year round. So with that, I'm so excited to welcome Jane Cavanaugh-Smith, Head U.S. Public Affairs and Patient Advocacy, Rare Blood Disorders, and Timothy Buck, Associate Director of Marketing at Santa Fe Genzyme. Jane and Tim, thank you so much for being here. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to you guys now. All right, Jane, take it away. All right. Uh, hi, guys. Good afternoon. And thank you to Diana and everybody at NHF who uh, pulls you all together for these webinars and other great learnings. Um, as she mentioned, I, I'm uh, head of public affairs and patient advocacy, and I have my good friend Tim on the line with us today from our marketing department who is going to tell you about a really exciting program that um, we've been working on with NHF called June for Joint Health. And that you'll see here in the agenda is going to take most of our time. But I did appreciate also having the opportunity with you today to just give a very high level overview, a little introduction of Santa Fe Genzyme's new rare blood disorders unit and, um, and a couple of highlights on our patient services. Um, program and uh, and and certainly want to start with a big thank you I know how busy you guys are um, a, as some of you know I worked in uh, at, in a chapter at, at Neha for over 10 years so I know how much is going on with you guys especially as you enter into the summer season and camp season so we really appreciate you taking the time to uh, spend about a half hour or so with us today all right, so Rare Blood Disorders was a new franchise that was um, added to Santa Fe Genzyme when they acquired BioVerative. Uh, as you all may remember, BioVerative um, was a, a spin-off to a new independent company from Biogen, and, uh, and then we were brought into the Santa Fe Genzyme group. Um, part, of that, um, part of that group includes rare disease, multiple sclerosis, oncology, and Im immunology. And now we are the fifth arm of the Santa Fe Genzyme family, having added our rare blood disorders portfolio. Um, just uh, some highlights. I, I know you guys know hemophilia very well, so I won't spend too much time there. But the other parts of our rare blood disorders work include uh, acquired, I'll say it once, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, uh, fondly known as ATTP. And um, that is an is a ultra-rare, life-threatening autoimmune blood disorder, and it causes extensive clot formation in small blood vessels throughout the body. Um, we were very proud to, to launch a, a new therapy for that just this past February 
um, the first approved therapy specifically for ATTP. And then under the area of hemoglobinopathies, we have uh, research going on in both sickle cell and beta thalassemia. Um, some of you are probably more familiar with sickle cell. It's an inherited red blood cell disorder that causes sickle-shaped red blood cells. And those sickled cells can stick together to the vessel walls and, and it can cause some really painful blockage that slows or stops the flow of blood. And beta thalassemia um, is also a severe chronic blood disorder. It results in an immune system mistakenly destroying your red blood cells, uh, which can lead to severe anemia. And lastly, uh, this one might be new to you. It was to me when, when BioVeritive acquired a company named True North back in 2017, um, but it is cold agglutinin disease. Um, it is not uh, inherited. It, it tends to come on later in life, and it's a severe um, chronic blood disorder, um, again, with the destruction of rare blood cells, and the symptoms are things like fatigue and shortness of breath, weakness, and lightheadedness. So we're very proud of this very robust portfolio, and we're going to show you in a minute some exciting things that are going on in research. Um, so kind of building up from, um, as I mentioned, the rare blood disorders franchise is new to Santa Fe Genzyme. The foundation of that is, is BioVerative with our approved products for hemophilia A and hemophilia B. Um, last year, Santa Fe also acquired a company called Ablinx. And, and with that, um, their therapy for ATTP, which I mentioned was approved in February. We have phase three trials going on for cold agglutinin disease. Um, more continuing phase three for hemophilia in Fetusaran, which may sound familiar to, to you. That used to be under Al Nylum, and Santa Fe acquired um, the rights to that therapy and that research. So it's been added to our rare blood disorders franchise. And, and lastly, we're in phase one um, for another hemophilia A therapy called BIV001. Um, you don't see uh, the hemoglobinopathies on this, uh, this step ladder here just yet because it's in your earlier clinical trial. But I think the, the general message we want to leave you with is that we're very proud of all the research that, that's going on at Santa Fe Genzyme, specifically in rare blood disorders, and that we have brought to the Santa Fe Genzyme family um, such an interesting and exciting portfolio of, of treatments. Um, our patient services team, just a, a few quick highlights on the resources and services that we have. Um, first up is our fabulous team. Um, you see three, three ladies here uh, today, and, and I'm happy to say that we just hired a, a, a great guy who will be the fourth member of our patient services team, and he is bilingual, which we all know is, is a great asset. Um, and I think what's great about our team is that our patients who connect with patient services are assigned um, an associate who will work with them on an ongoing basis. You don't have to start those conversations at the beginning of your story every time you reach out. Amy, Lori, uh, Joan, um, they, they know their patients and they're open from 8, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. to serve both coasts. So there are occasions that a patient might call in and get someone else who's filling the, the beginning hours or the later hours. But for the most part, they'll have, they'll have a consistent ongoing relationship with one of our patient service um, admins. And, and, and their role is basically to help navigate you know, their insurance plans. Um, if, if patients get into a situation where they need extra assistance, they can help navigate those resources. Um, we have a few programs, um, most notably our, our free trial program coming up so eligible um, patients can, can try one of our approved therapies while they're waiting to see if, um, if their insurance has been approved. And, um, and the access to educational resources and programs, that in a nutshell is, is making connections to our core managers, who I know you guys know really well. Um, so our patient services associates, when, when a patient comes into them, certainly wants to make that connection to the core on the local basis so that they can be included in different resources and programs that are being um, provided. Uh, and I did mention that, uh, you know, we're, we're proud that we have in-house patient services where our associates work one-on-one -on -one with patients. 
Um, these are the three main pieces of our patient services program. Um, free trial program provides up to 30 days of factor with a prescription from your doctor. Um, that first shipment will typically go out 24 to 48 hours. And, um, and, and during this time, they're usually doing that insurance benefits navigation to, to see if it's being approved by your plan. Um, once, um, once they kind of roll off free trial, uh, they would go into the copay program, which provides up to $12,000 each year for out of, to help cover out of pocket expenses. There are no, um, income limits to that program. It's open to everybody. And then lastly, the factor access program is what I would call your safety net. If, if you're in the free trial program and you need a little more time to, uh, to move over to commercial insurance, um, you would be enrolled into the factor access program. If there was any, kind of, any situation where a patient on one of our therapies found themselves with an, a gap in their insurance, we would enroll them in the factor access program. Um, because the bottom line is that the patient services are, are there really to just ensure that patients can get access to the therapies that they've been prescribed. Um, here is, um, you know, additional support services. As I mentioned, we're open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. to make sure we're, we're covering patients and families on both coasts. And, um, and this kind of summarizes the insurance counseling, the benefit investigations. Our patient service associates work closely with both the treatment centers and the pharmacies to make this as smooth and hassle-free as possible for, um, for the patients and their caregivers. Uh, I don't know if, if, if we want to stop now maybe to see if there are any questions on that little intro, intro um, before we kind of get to the heart of our presentation today, which is June for Joint Health. Um, I don't see any questions, James, through the chat feature, so I think we might be able to go ahead unless if anyone does type one in, um, but I don't see any currently. Excellent. All right, then I'm going to hand it off to, to Tim Buck, who, um, who conceived and pulled through this really exciting idea that is now a wonderful partnership between NHF and Santa Fe Genzyme. And um, thank you, Tim, for bringing that to not only NHF and Santa Fe Genzyme, but of course the larger community. We're really excited. Yeah, all right. So hello everyone, I am Tim and I'm super excited to talk to you all about what Juno for Joint Health is. And before I go into like, what are the things we're doing? I wanna start from sort of the beginning about why we decided, uh, sort of the very beginning of Juno for Joint Health when we were sort of coming up with this idea, sort of how we landed uh, work with NHF. So. Well, we had sort of thought about this, you know, way back, almost around this time last year. And we said, you know, what if we could help um, you know, create this month that's focused on the importance of joint health in the hemophilia community? We said, yeah, but we're our own pharmaceutical company. It doesn't make sense for us to declare sort of a month focused for June health and what turned into be a year-long focus. We really need a partner on this and a partner um, – and a partner to really help us bring this to life. And so we started to think about, you know, who the potential partners are. And when we stripped it back, we said, you know, what does NHF stand for? And we looked at some of the core values that NHF has on the website and by default NHF chapters and, you know, altruism, compassion, and leadership. Uh, you know, we look at altruism, you know, serving the bleeding disorder community above all else and compassion to make sure that everyone with a bleeding disorder has access to the support they need and leadership. I think NHF, nails that, you know, NHF and their chapters are the default leaders in the bleeding disorder community. And for us, it was a no-brainer to approach the National Hemophilia Foundation to say, hey, would you guys be interested in working with us on this project? And they jumped on it and have helped really build it from what we were thinking about was a, maybe a 30-day uh, push to what has turned into a three-year collaboration. So what it so the, the genesis of it is, if you look back at how national and local groups have really been focusing uh, over, over history, I think a lot of this started about um, focusing on advancing treatment. There's a lot of advocacy, you know, legislative days, uh, you know, working with pharmaceutical companies to make sure that the treatments are improving. I think we're all reading the headlines in hemophilia-related uh, newspapers or hemophilia-related websites. Treatment is advancing. And with advancing treatment um, comes some challenges around access to treatment. I've seen a lot of programs that NHF and other groups and even local groups have been doing to get there. 
And as we've been doing all those, I think the next sort of opportunity sort of rises to the top. And we think about joint health, and we think that's where some of the most serious side effects of hemophilia can come up. And we want to make sure that we work on a program that helps really raise the importance and how important joint health is in the hemophilia community because of all the work that you guys have done advancing treatment, ensuring access to treatment, those have been really successful. Imagine if we could be as successful as driving home the importance of joint health in the hemophilia community, the impact this will have on your chapter membership and the broader heme community. And so that's what sort of brings us when we sort of looked at, all right, if that's what we're gonna talk about, you know, is this really a need? And I think it really is. And uh, we, we did a little bit of research, but also in talking to some of the community members the past month or so, um, joint damage really does have a severe impact on the quality of life of folks with hemophilia. Uh, we spoke with um, a gentleman in his, you know, 20s and, oh, sorry, late, late, early 30s um, back this past winter. And I think a phrase that really stuck with me is, you know, you know, yes, I think about my joints, but I think about the joints that my children, I think about my children who aren't born yet joint, you know, how is their joint quality going to be? And that's when we also looked at some of the literature and said, hey, you know, there's a ton of literature out there that talks about how joint health and uh, that how joint health is negatively affecting uh, the hemophilia uh, community. And so we saw that literature and a lot of other people have, um, but there's other ways to help improve joint health. And some of those are along the round of exercise and of course with the right treatment that can help improve joint health. And I think, like I said, we've seen that research, but other people have seen that. There's general education on joint disease. There's, you know, videos or brochures. Uh, we've also seen HTCs adopting a technology called MUSCUS, uh, muscular skeletal ultrasound. This is because this is a really cheap, uh, I say cheap relatively, uh, way to sort of assess the quality of a patient's joints in office during a comp visit that can really ensure that a patient's joints are being appropriately monitored in their time. And then I think you've seen them in different conventions and conferences. Uh, there's been a lot of HTC-driven education about joint disease, uh, how this affects mobility, and also the importance of a healthy lifestyle when living with hemophilia. And so while all of this education is important and all these things are going in the right direction, we thought with this there's a little bit of opportunity for something more. And we think that something more is the idea of helping to reduce preventative joint damage by encouraging folks in collaboration with their HTC to develop lifelong active habits. And what I mean by this is looking at that research, showing that just by stretching and moving, there's actually peer-reviewed literature that shows out there, you can help improve the quality of your joints, you can help improve your joint health. And so, that's where we came to this idea for what we decided to call, you know, June for Joint Health, is that we wanted to partner with NHF to champion this new advocacy month that really galvanized the community together to get moving and keep their joints healthy. Uh, June for Joint Health is not about weight loss. It is not about uh, you need to get out there and increase your range of motion by three degrees every year. Uh, it's about movement and it's for all ages and all abilities. Uh, and the reason we're doing this is we want to demonstrate that Santa Fe has a commitment to the health of the hemophilia community beyond just recombinant factor eight and recombinant factor nine. And we also want to encourage joint health to be in included in hemophilia conversations. I think as we look across ABRs, which are very important, they're the primary endpoints in many clinical trials, uh, there's more to treatment goals than a number. And we think joint health and one of the reasons we, we, we really love this idea, we think joint health is something that is, you know, is really important, but sometimes gets uh, overshadowed by striving for a certain bleed rate or an infusion frequency. And so we really want folks to think about when they go in for their comp visits, talking about all those things that are important to them and then really encourage joint health to be part of that conversation as well. So with all that lead up, this is sort of what June for Joint Health, or JFJH, has sort of turned into. Uh, we had some great discussions in New York with the NHF team, and again, we started with this idea like, oh, it'll be a really great, you know, month-long project. Uh, Michelle Rice was like, no, I don't know. This is not a month-long project. This is going to be a, a three-year, 12-months-a-year project. I said, oh, okay, <laughs> let's see how we can do this. And so 
what we've been working on over the past two or three months is this pre-launch phase here, this orange bucket. Um, just like when the Susan G. Komen Fund, uh, Susan G. Komen launched, or when uh, Movember launched for Men's Health, you have to get the word out there. And so we've been working with NHF's marketing team to create this national awareness campaign. So we've launched a website, juneforjoinhealth.org. We have some drivers to that website on the NHF website. If you've been following along on the NHF Facebook page, there's no way you could have missed uh, some of our social media posts. And we're also doing some posts on the Sanofi.us site. So really trying to drive everyone just to let them know that there's this new thing called June for Joint Health that NHF and Sanofi Genzyme are working on. Here's what it is, here's why it is, and here's why joint health is important in the bleeding disorder community. Once we launched that, we moved right to our community activations. Um, as you think about a national media campaign, is really broad, but not very deep. These events are really deep in very specific communities. And so we had a chance to go out to Missouri this past week and uh, join Camp Not A Clot Among Us. And what these events are about is talking about how movement can help improve joint health. But movement doesn't mean going to the gym. Movement doesn't mean running three times a week. Movement means moving more often. And so what we want to demonstrate to the camp there is, hey, movement could be cleaning up the, some of the, just doing some uh, like park cleanup around the camp that they go to. And so it's this really great project where the uh, Missouri, the Gateway chapter was able to give back to an organization that's very important to them, the camp that uh, they attend every year, while at the same time demonstrating that, see all the work we're doing here today, digging in the dirt, planting leaves, planting trees, dragging mulch across the yard, that's being active. Simple things like this can help improve your joint health. And so we have three of these events planned this year. Uh, one we just did in Eureka. Uh, the next one's coming up in Greenville, South Carolina. And to really drive home the point that June for Joint Health is more than just June, we're working with the Tulsa chapter to do a project this fall, all along the similar lines. It's a community service project. We're giving back to the local community and we're demonstrating that being active, you can be active in a variety of different ways, one of which can help the chapters. Uh, we've partnered with our media team to help generate some local coverage. So our goal, you know, my personal goal is to have a fleet of TV trucks lined up down the road with satellite dishes. I think the reality of this is we're getting some local reporters. Uh, we're trying to get, we got some radio interviews in um, the St. Louis area to really talk about, I think it's a great opportunity for the chapter to talk about, hey, what the heck is this chapter doing? What is a bleeding disorder? And why is joint health something that you guys are worried about? You, you, this, I thought this was a bleeding disorder. Why are you talking about your joints? And so we've had good success in Missouri, and we're building off of that into South Carolina, into uh, Oklahoma as well. The other community activation we've been doing is attending some walks. And we did this in Oregon, and, this, and then again this past weekend at the Neha Walk uh, in our hometown in Massachusetts. And what we did here is that, all right, all these people are coming together. It's a great opportunity for us to talk about the importance of joint health, but no one's going to want to, you know, attend a lecture about the importance of joint health when they're at a walk. That's not the purpose of a walk. Uh, what would work really nicely is working with NHF and the local chapter, NHF was able to source a physical therapist who was able to get on stage and sort of say, hi, hello, their credentials, and then shared with them some of the firsthand experiences about how important joint health is and what they've seen as a physical therapist. And then with that in mind, knowing that stretching can also help along with the right treatment, help improve your joint health, the PT led the whole audience through a five or 10 minute stretching routine. So it was great because everyone at the walk was stretched and ready to walk. And it was also a great opportunity for us to uh, get a great audience, uh, make them aware about this great initiative that we're working on. And then lastly, uh, there are some conferences that we're going to be attending this year. So what we want to do is really celebrate the progress that we've made um, at the Texas Bleeding Disorder Conference and NHF's uh, October annual meeting. And this is just a rendering of the booth that we've been putting together. Um, we'll have some you know, small little giveaways here that talk about the importance of joint health. We'll have some photos from the events that I've been talking about in Greenville, Eureka, um, and some of the walks. 
But right here, we're going to be having a physical therapist join us at our booth, and it's going to be doing, again, musca, so the muscular skeletal ultrasound. What they're going to be doing is sharing how, you know, really non-invasive this is and showing what you can see. Uh, I've had the opportunity to have my arms, uh, my elbows um, done in the muscus, and it's fascinating because if you hold your arm out like you're making a fist and you rotate your forearm left and right, well, the physical therapist who has the probe on your elbow can actually see that joint, and you can see that move in real time. And as I've talked to these physical therapists, what they'll say is, you know, see how this is smooth right here? You have a healthy elbow joint. That's good. Let me show you what a joint that might have uh, uh, severe hemarthrosis might look like. And so while we won't be, um, what we'll do, we'll be sharing what this looks like on, for lack of a better word, uh, healthy volunteers, you know, Sanofi and NHF staff, we'll be comparing uh, the joints that are ultrasound there with some of those joints that this physical therapist has seen in their practice to really drive home uh, the message is, to, excuse me, to really drive home the importance of asking your HTC saying, hey, I know joint health is important. I saw this crazy muscus thing. Is that something that you guys can offer? Uh, we've gotten some price quotes for these. You know, there are a, there's a probe you can attach to an iPad. It costs around $8,000. And $8,000 to all of us is a lot of money, but to a uh, hospital system, an $8,000 piece of medical equipment can do a lot of good, especially at an HTC. So we're going to be, again, talking about the importance of joint health these conferences, but also demonstrating ways at their HTC that patients can proactively, uh, proactively ask for better care of their joints um, uh, with, with muscus. So that's sort of... Uh, why we're doing joint health, those are sort of the what are the things we're doing. Uh, some of the other stuff is, you know, how does this work with NHF and Sanofi Genzyme? Is this an NHF project or is this a Sanofi project? It, it, the answer is it's really a both project. Uh, NHF and Sanofi Genzyme have signed a three-year services and collaboration agreement. Um, so NHF, you know, is going to be, NHF works with us to create some of the things. Uh, all of our medical references or anything are fact-checked by NHF. And then because NHF has a lot of good distribution channels, think about email list, Facebook, uh, website, they're also distributing some of our joint content. And then we also have some strategic work sessions uh, built into our plan for the next, you know, for the three-year agreement so that we can start planning now what we want June for Joint Health 2020 to look for, and this will flow into our budget development. So, you know, this year we only did three events. You know, next year maybe we'll do 10, and so by having this really great collaboration now, we're able to better plan for stuff that sets us up for success in the years following. So our goals this year, like I said, we have two walk events, three for joint, three joints for good events. Those are those community service projects we talked about. We want to have a great conference presence at TBDC and the Bleeding Disorder Conference. And we want to measure the, we want to see an increase in the amount of joint health awareness uh, in the hemophilia community. And so with all of that, uh, I sort of want to end it on, I think this is my last slide, is this it? Yep. Um, I sort of want to end on if you've, anything that sort of caught your attention to say, hey, you know, I like what you did here, but I'd love to know as we're going into these strategic planning sessions, you know, what can we provide your chapter to educate on joint health? You know, how can we bring this to your chapter next year? In any other builds that you've thought about, you know, maybe I said something earlier on, you just thought, you know, maybe if we did that, but this and my chapter it would work really well. I'd love to spend, you know, five or so minutes or more if you guys have the time, um, sort of hearing from you guys about how June for Joint Health, you know, NHF and Sanofi Genzyme could bring June for Joint Health to your uh, local chapter. And with that, I think a question came in, I'm not really sure, but uh, I'll let Diana yeah. help with the questions. <laughs> yeah, I want to it. And what I want to do too is I'm going to go ahead and unmute everyone. So just be mindful um, that if you still want to keep yourself muted, go ahead and hit that on your personal device. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and unmute everybody. Um, but Dawn, um, I know, I see that you have a question here. If you just want to go ahead and, and say it out um, to, the, to the attendees. Yeah, sure. Um, thank you. Um, I just, so a couple of things. First, I just want to let you know that I had actually talked to Bridget Tyree in at, at the Missouri chapter after she had um, partnered with June for Joint Health and she was so enthusiastic about the media that their chapter got um, 
They were on radio shows. There was a lot of interest and she felt that it really um, allowed their chapter to showcase the work they did, including yep. the June for Joint Health. So that was really positive feedback. Um, I guess my question um, to you is that do chapter events in 2020 have to be in June or can it be in the surrounding months? It can definitely be in the surrounding months. You know, we, lo we, we, we love, it's funny, we have a, a whiteboard here in our um, seating area of all the events in June. It's very full. I can only imagine what everyone else's whiteboard looks like. We would love to do events in June, but we definitely want to do events in the other 11 months of the year, too. Okay, so this is going to be a year-round initiative. Yes. Okay, awesome. Cool. Um, another question I have, <laughs> just while people are thinking of things. Um, so I know the experience of the pilot chapters this year, and, and there have been a lot of um, interaction with Santa Fe Genzyme, and actually you guys have really helped with those media contacts. Is that your intent to be able to do that for the chapters that participate in the future? Yeah, so I think our goal is to, so, so I think there's, there's, so yes is the answer. I think I've also learned a lot about how pitching to the media works. Um, for example, when we were going down to Missouri, my media team came and said, hey, Tim, we're really excited about this. We just have to be mindful and respectful of the tornadoes that just came through Missouri. And some news stations might say, hey, you know, we don't have time to cover a thing we haven't heard about. We've got a tornado ripping through a town that we're going to spend all of our resources on. So it's a, um, I'm learning about how to, uh, sort of what I'm looking for, how to effectively pitch to media stations. Uh, our goal is to have that. I think what the local stations love is talking to the local people and talking to the local community members. What they don't want to hear from is Tim Buck and Jane Cavanaugh Smith from Santa Fe Genzyme. They want to hear, this is our radio station, news channel, newspaper that covered the local area. We want to share stories about our constituents. So we would love to do this in the future. Um, but we're also learning about where the bounds of reality are. You know, in some cases, we won't be able to get coverage, but we're going to pitch for it. And to your point, I think it's a great opportunity for the chapter to raise awareness about themselves as well as why they're doing this event. So it, it's a sort of a win-win-win as I think about it. Awesome. Thank you. Does anybody have any other questions for Jane or Tim? So I know people have questions because no one ever likes to ask a question on a webinar. But what I would say is, you know, we're at the beginning of, you know, I'm going to be reaching out to NHF in the next couple of weeks and say, hey, let's sit down and start making our strategic plan for next year. Um, I would love to have a conversation with NHF and say, you know what, on that webinar, this ED mentioned, you know, A, B, and C, and one, two, and three, because having those ideas early allows us to, you know, execute on them next year, but also ideate on them and say, hey, that was a great idea. What if we did that and this together? Um, so I'd, I'd really encourage you guys to think about, you know, maybe you don't have a camp that you could give back to as a service project, but you, you know, for example, in Greenville, we're cleaning up a local park in that area, and the great, one of the great things about this is that was the local park that also helped um, that, so how do I say this? That was the local park, the, the Parks and Rec Department that supported World Hemophilia Day for that chapter. So it was a way for the chapter to say, hey, thank you so much for letting us light up the park red. Here's our opportunity to give back to you and to demonstrate to our constituents the importance of being active and movement can help with their joint health. So it was really a, uh, a really nice way to help out a great organization that's already helping out the chapter. And I imagine there's some other sort of synergies that might exist out there where you might know of a local organization. You know, we also talked about, um, you know, is there an animal shelter that needs to, hey, can we bring a chapter in? We're going to walk all of these dogs for an afternoon. Um, there's really, it's the limits of creativity and what our lawyers approve uh, is what we can do for these different, um, these community service events. Tim, I have a question, and I apologize if you might have addressed this in the webinar, but what are some materials um, that you guys provide to support June for Joint Health to the chapters? Yep. So if I were to make a list, I'm going to make it in my head. Um, the 
first thing that we will do is uh, the first thing. So one of the things that we'll do is a little bit of so uh, if I back up beyond just one beyond just material. So the support we'll do is uh, basically sorry I'm stumbling so much because that's a really good question. Setting this up once we've identified we're working with Chapter X. Uh, there'll be a call with myself. Uh, sort of my execution partner, Kelsey is her name right now, um, and the core manager and the chapter executive director. And on that first call, we'll say, hey, you know, it's been agreed upon that, you know, you and I are going to partner. We're so excited about that. Here are some community service ideas that we've identified. There's this park, this park, and this park, or there's this park, this dog shelter. Uh, what we will then do is look at those opportunities and then work with the executive director. Like I look at it as providing a menu saying, Here's some things we could do. Here's some dates we could do them. What works with your calendar? And usually in one or two calls, we can bang that out and say, this is the date, the time, and the, um, and the opportunity. Then it would be incumbent upon the uh, executive director to recruit for that event. And to compensate for the recruiting efforts, uh, NHF provides a stipend and also reimburses some expenses around that. And then we would have some sort of planning status calls. Uh, hey, we talked to the um, you know the Parks and Rec guy. It's going to be planting trees, or it's going to be cleaning up a garden. Uh, the sort of every week we'd have sort of a weekly touch base to get up there. Um, we would provide some language that you guys could use in an e-blast, like "Dear X, join us at ABC location to do one, two, three activity," and then a description of what June for Joint Health is. Um, we would provide, I'm trying to think, depending on how many events we do, we'd also do some social posts, um, not necessarily driving to the event, but some looking back and saying, here's the work we did. And then we'll have 50% of the events will likely have a photographer to capture all of the, um, to capture all the work, um, and capture all the work and also share those images back. Um, those are sort of, yeah, and then on site we would have um, yeah we would have five or so people there to help facilitate the event. Um, we have some hats, water, make sure people don't get too dehydrated while working out in the sun. Um, and and then we'd have someone if we we're able to get a media, we'd have someone there to manage the media to ensure that the executive director got an interview, to ensure that they're covering things the way we all want them to. Those are sort of the resource, and then someone from NHF and someone again from Sampy Genzyme would be there to sort of kick the event off with the ED. There's my long rambling list. <laughs> no, that was good, and I'm going to also ask this question because I, I work with a lot of chapters on different resources, but I'm sure one of their questions might be also along the lines of, um, you know, are you able to provide, I guess, the marketing material so that they can get that information out to their community members? Yeah. So I think we, it's funny because like we, we, we didn't initially plan for that for these first three, but everyone has asked for that. So I think what we've done is we've written a blurb that they can say, hey, um, you know, send this to your e-list. If in the future, and this is a great for our strategic planning, like, is this something we should have? We should have a, you know, a form letter printed and just sitting in a warehouse that says, all right, here, we're sending you 500 of these form letters, lick a stamp on them, and off they go. Uh, but I, that, that is, to your point, chapters have asked for sort of help us recruit, uh, and we can do a little bit better at that for next year. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, I don't see any other questions that have appeared through chat um, or the Q&A feature. So I just want to give a few moments for that. But in the meantime, you know, I really want to thank um, you, Tim, and Jane for being our guest presenters today. If anyone on today's webinar has any questions after the completion of this regarding this awesome collaboration between NHF and Santa Fe Genzyme, please let me know. Um, and of course, you know, I'm sure Tim and Jane, you wouldn't mind hearing from them either. Uh, but of yeah. course, I can pass that along. Um, let me see if anything, yep, nothing's come through. So with that, I mean, I just want to thank you all for your time this afternoon. I really appreciate and applaud your commitment. Um, but I want to, you know, I want to jump back. I'm not sure, um, Jane and Tim, if you've got any other slides that you want to go through. Not me. No, okay. no, I think that takes care of it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks to all our chapters. I really appreciate, you know, all of you participating in these learning opportunities. And as always, 
please reach out if you need anything. Um, and with that, thanks again, Jane and Tim, and have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.